This video is part of a series teaching you how to play with modes. And to go with this series, I prepared for you a free downloadable pack with 35 backing tracks, full charts, videos, tabs. It's completely free. Check the link below, grab your pack, and let's get into this lesson. We are in part six of our series on playing with modes, and today is all about the Phrygian mode, which follows the previous video, which was about the Lydian mode. Yes, these videos are standalone, however, they are organized into maybe an unconventional way because I want to break the, the knowledge that you might have that these, these modes are part of the same major scale. I don't want you to think of them like that. I want you to think of them as unique and individual modes. This one follows the Lydian. Why? Because I think Lydian and Phrygian have some things in common. We're going to talk all about this. Grab your guitar. This will be interactive. I'll meet you right after this. Hi, my name is David Wallenman. Welcome to the channel, which is about helping guitar players throughout the world find their voice and apply it on their instrument. This is a series about playing with modes. Phrygian is a minor mode. Why? Because it has a minor third. The third, the third note, the third interval of any scale will determine if the scale you're using is part of the major family or the minor family. There are a lot of minor items that you can put in this minor box. As long as it has a minor third, it's a minor item. So today the Phrygian has a minor third, therefore it goes in that box. Therefore it works over a minor chord. Now there are a lot of minor chords too. As long as the third is minor, it's going to go in that minor box. And in order to uh, play over something that will work with a Phrygian mode, for instance, you need to make sure that notes don't clash. If you follow the series from the start, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about intervals. For instance, if uh, we're playing over this backing track here, which you can get for free, the link is below. Well, this backing track is made of four notes. It's made of a root, which is G in this case, a minor third, minor box, a perfect fifth, and a minor seventh. Therefore, if I was to play a scale or mode that, um, that has a major third, for example, while the minor third of the backing track that you're hearing here will clash with the major third. It'll sound something like this. That's where things go wrong, right? That's where you don't match musical elements. The, the idea here is that because this backing track is made of the following four notes, one or root, minor third, fifth, and minor seventh, um, the, the Phrygian mode, the formula of the Phrygian mode also has a root, obviously, a minor third, a perfect fifth, and a minor seventh. So it's going to work over this. There are multiple scales that will work over this backing track made of the four notes. As long as you have the one, minor three, five, and minor seven in the scale that you're using, it will work over this track. That explains why you've heard this before if you started watching from the start. We use the same exact backing track for the Dorian mode and the Aeolian mode, because those two modes also have a one, minor three, five, and minor seven. Okay, all right, let's get into the formula of the Phrygian mode. Now, as you know, the formula is the blueprint of a scale. That's what tells you that this particular scale will go over this particular chord or a series of chords, right? You need to be aware of that blueprint. The blueprint of the Phrygian mode, if we're in G, G is gonna be the one, the root. We have the root, a minor second, this is the first mode that we've encountered in this series that has a minor second. The minor second is just one fret higher than the root. Minor third. You knew that already, right? Because it's a minor mode. Perfect fourth. Perfect fifth. Minor sixth. And minor seventh. Okay? So if I play these four notes, it's going to work over the backing track, which has four of the notes that I played. One, minor three, five, and minor seven. So here's the, the scale. seven notes. As you're playing them, name them. One, flat two or minor two, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor sixth, minor seventh. Being aware 
of the name of the interval you're playing is really important because intervals is are, are what brings um, the, the feeling in music. That's uh, A note by itself is just a note. Now, if you play that note in relation to something else, it becomes something that gives the emotional value to a musical piece you're hearing. And if you can associate mentally different feelings, different flavors, colors, whatever you want to do to, to make it clearer in your mind, if you can associate those things with the intervals, then you'll be more in control of your music. That's really important. Now, I said in the beginning of the video that Lydian and Phrygian have things in common. Maybe not what you think, but this is, um, this is what I mean by that. I think every scale, every mode, and, and I like to see those as alphabets, as colors, musical canvases, they all have, they, they all have their own feelings because the formulas, the blueprints, are different. That's what we just talked about. And uh, to me... Even though Lydian is part of the major family, Phrygian is part of the minor family, they kind of have a feeling of um, uh, being a little bit exotic, a little out there, a little bit. Not as much as others, maybe, but to me, they kind of go along like that. Just like, you know, when we started this series, I started on purpose with Mixolydian and then Dorian. Those two scales are kind of bluesy, modern sounding. They go together. Ionian and Aeolian, which we covered in the previous videos, they kind of go together too because they, they kind of sound sound uh, classical a little bit, um, you're very stable, you're used to that sound. And that's why Lydian and Phrygian today kind of go along. Even though they're separate, they're in two different boxes, they kind of are part of the same type of feeling that you get. And the reason it it's kind of sounds exotic here for the Phrygian is because of that minor second. <laughs> very close to the um, the one, the root. If I just play that minor second over the backing track, it's, it will give you that se sense of uh, tension a little bit, right? It works, you might need to get used to that. It works because that note doesn't clash with a, another second, a major second, which is not heard in the track. But it's a little open, right? A little out there. You kind of want to go back to the one. Now, what I said here is really important, and hopefully I think this is going to help you. I said you kind of want to go to the one, but that doesn't mean that you have to go to the one. Oftentimes, I'm asked in an email or whatever, like, which note should I land on when you're playing in a particular mode? Any. They are all useful. They all sound different. If you don't like the sound of this, stay on it for a little while. Until your ear gets used to it, then you can make a, a good decision as to do I want to use this note or not. All right, so just like we did for the Dorian and Aeolian, we can also associate a minor pentatonic with this Phrygian mode. Why? Because we find within the formula, the blueprint of the, the, the Phrygian mode, a hidden minor pentatonic. A minor pentatonic is made of a one, a flat three, a four, five, flat seven. A Phrygian mode is made of a one, minor second, a flat three, four, five, minor six, minor seven. The, the intervals that I gave um, in a loud voice were the notes of the minor pentatonic scale. So that means that I could play minor pentatonic here. All my minor pentatonic licks would work in a Phrygian context. Right? No problem. But that's not super flavorful. As a matter of fact, most players use the minor pentatonic scale. It sounds awesome, but it's not as flavorful as a targeted as the full mode is. But there's an easy fix to that. If you're not comfortable phrasing with modes, if whenever you have to improvise with modes, you go back maybe to the three note per string scale, which was me for a long time, and I almost had two types of phrasing. I had the pentatonic, which I was expressive and, and I felt comf comfortable really telling my story with that. I can add a lot of feel to it. But as soon as it came to phrasing modally, it was like... Mm -hmm. 
more uh, pattern-based, more sequence-based, and there was a disconnect there. You don't have to do that because now you know that within the Frisian mode you have a hidden minor pentatonic scale. That means that you can still uh, build your musical improvisation with all the, the nuances and, and the expression of the minor pentatonic scale. You, you are just two notes away from phrasing modally. Just learn these two notes within the context of your minor pentatonic scale. That's the approach here. That's what we're going to do. So if we look at our minor pentatonic scale, we're in the key of G. We'll use the first position, you know, two notes per strings. From the low E string to the high E, we have frets 3-6, 3-5, 3-5, 3-5, 3-6, 3-6. We'll stay in that zone of the fretboard. You are playing five of the seven notes of the Phrygian mode. You just need to know where these additional notes are, the minor second and the minor sixth. Let's do that. So let's start with the minor second. We have a minor second on the low E string uh, fourth fret, just one fret away from the root right here. You have another one on the fourth string sixth fret. And you have another one on the first string, fourth fret. So anytime you play a one, so one, one fret higher, and then continue minor pentatonic. So one, minor second, three, four, five, seven, one. Here it is. Three, four, five, six, one. You are one note away from the full Phrygian mode now. So the notes we added were on the sixth and the first string, fourth fret and the fourth string, sixth fret. Let's start with that, that minor second, which is really the, the characteristic note of the Phrygian mode. We're gonna improvise using the minor pentatonic, and we're gonna try to inject, maybe land on one of these minor seconds. Let's give that a try. Start with my minor pentatonic scale. Added one of those minor seconds, and then back to the minor pentatonic. Minor seconds. That already sounds very frigging y. There's only one note to add. Inject that note into your, your, your phrases, you'll sound fully Dorian, that's the minor sixth. The minor sixth within that zone of the fretboard is found on the, well, you just, whenever you play the five, one fret higher. So you got one, minor three, four, five, one fret higher. Seven, one, three, four, five, one fret higher. Seven, one, three. So what we did here is play that minor six on the fifth string, sixth fret, and second string, fourth fret. You can do the same thing. We'll base this on the minor pentatonic scale and then inject, maybe land on one of those minor sixth. Minor pentatonic. Minor six. Right there. Then you add that minor seconds too. Six. And soon enough, you're, you'll be phrasing Phrygian within the context of the minor pentatonic scale. You'll be more fluent than having to transition from a pentatonic type of playing to the three-note string, which is very scholar, very mechanical, maybe not as expressive. It's got its use, but, but that's what I would suggest. I've got one more tip for you, and that's to think in terms of relative arpeggios. For a second, we're gonna go back to the, the birth of these modes. We are seeing these modes, these scales, as unique and individual scales, right? That's what we've been doing on this channel for a long time. But for a second, we need to consider that these modes originally were all extracted from a common scale, the major scale, the Ionian mode. Ionian major, same thing. 
If you play the Ionian mode or the major scale all together, well, you'll have the major scale, especially if you play it with um, a constant uh, note on the bottom that is attracting all the other notes, right? Um, if you play that same major scale from the second note of the major scale and that second note becomes the, the root, the note that attracts everything else, you'll be in a Dorian context. If you do that from the third note, you'll be in a Phrygian context. And then Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, all these modes follow each other. And you know by now six of them. Uh, they have a particular order. Ionian, which we already studied. Dorian, studied that one. Phrygian, that's today's lesson. Lydian, we studied that last time. We're going to focus on that Lydian. So, because of the order of these notes, that means that Lydian comes right after Phrygian. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian. The second note of Phrygian is the first note of Lydian. Now, I want you to understand that even though we're starting the Phrygian from the second note, does it sound Lydian? It depends. If we're playing over this backing track, no, because this backing track is built on G minor. So even if I play uh, one fret higher, which is A flat, A flat Lydian. Looking at my guitar, I might be thinking, oh, that's Lydian. Now close your eyes for a second. Does that, what does that sound like? Something. What about, what about this? Sounded pretty much the same, right? Well, they sound the same because I was playing over the same exact backing track. Everything I was playing was attracted to the same track. And when you were closing your eyes, if you did, <laughs> one time I was playing in that Lydian position, the other time in the, the Phrygian position, but I was playing the same notes, right? Just visually, I was thinking Lydian, but it, it sounded the same. Okay, that said, we are gonna play within the Lydian um, mode, the relative Lydian. We're gonna build an arpeggio here. Now these notes from the arpeggio are still gonna sound Phrygian, but because of the way that the notes are organized, it might, um, your phrasing might sound a little different. You're still in Phrygian, but a little different. So if we build a, let's say a four note arpeggio from the Lydian position, the relative Lydian, which is A flat, I'll have a major seven arpeggio with a one, three, five, major seven, one, three, five, major seven, one. And if I play that over this track, it's still gonna sound Phrygian, but the notes will be organized a little bit differently. Let me show you that, uh, that position really quick. There are multiple positions, possible positions, but this one is, a, is an easy one. It's in that zone of the fretboard. We're starting with the one of the relative Lydian, which is A flat. So we're on the low E string. Fret number four, that's our one in Lydian, but really if I play that over the track, that's a minor two, right? So we got the, we got that one for the one of the Lydian. The third of Lydian is on the fifth string, third fret. And then we got a perfect fifth within that Lydian um, visual context, and that'll be on the fifth string, sixth fret. On the next string, we have the seven on the uh, fourth string, fifth fret. So you got one, three, five, major seven. And then this is cool because you can do this. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. The fingering is important. Start with the pinky for the one on the fourth string, sixth fret. Ring finger is gonna take the three on the next string, fifth fret. The middle on the second string, fourth fret for the five. And the seven index on the first string, third fret. One finger per fret. One note per string. Hey, that's sweepable. And you can end with that root on the first string, fourth fret. And if I play this in context, sounds pretty cool. Reverse. So now you can inject that idea into your pentatonic with the additional minor second, minor six.
right? It sounds pretty cool. A lot of other things to explore with this, but those are the ideas that I had for you. That's kind of how I would approach these modes. Anticipate the sound of every single note you play. Be aware of the interval you're playing. Master these so that eventually when you're playing, you don't have to think about all that, but you would have done the work to associate feelings with um, what you're playing, and then it's kind of second nature. Just like learning a new language, you first have to learn all the grammatical rules and all that, and then when you are speaking to someone, you don't think about that. You just talk. Just like, like um, well, when I learned English, same deal. That's what I have for you today. Don't forget to download the full pack, not just this backing track, but I've got a full free pack uh, made of about 35 high quality backing tracks just like this, all the charts, some uh, videos with solo examples, all the tabs are included, it's free. Visit the link below. I don't know if it's going to stay free forever, but check it out. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, we'll see you very soon for our final part of this series on playing with modes. We'll explore the low Korean mode. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, a new video comes out helping guitar players like you find your own voice, your unique voice, and develop it on the instrument. Like this video, share it around, study it multiple times. I'll see you next time. Practice well.